Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Jacob and in this video we are going to be looking at a really interesting feature of ES6 and that is generator functions. I think these are really cool because you kind of have the properties of like a list of values but it's also just a function. So what is a generator? Essentially it's a function where it, it that generates basically an, an while well, it can generate an infinite list of values, but the unique thing about it is that it generates those values on demand. They're essentially made to order. It's kind of hard to explain without, you know, showing you some code. So let's get to the code. To make a generator function, we start out by saying function, and then we add this asterisk here. And that just tells JavaScript, all right, this is a generator function. So let's continue on. We'll say, well, I'll we'll call it count up. Okay, and then it just looks like a normal function here. I'll say uh, maybe for uh, let i equal one, uh, one, i is less than or equal to 10, if I can type correctly, i plus plus, and then we'll just console.log out i right there, and that is a valid generator function. So let's call it like so, save, and run it by saying node, index.js and of course nothing happens why is that remember it generates our values on demand so we've created a new instance of our generator um, but we have to tell it to generate our values so i'm going to say let counter equals that and now to tell it to generate our values we say counter.next okay we'll save that and there we go it generates every single value one two three four five six seven eight nine ten the problem is it's generating them all in one go, and it's logging them of its own accord. This is obviously not what you want to do with a generator function. You want to be able to say, all right, generate the first value, and then you'll generate one. Generate the second value, and it'll generate two. So this, like I said, this is a valid generator function, but it's a pointless one because we're not using the full power or the, you know, what generators are used for. So we have to use this keyword called yield, and that's what's going to stop the execution of this generator function and just, you know, return one of the values uh, in our sequence. So I'm just, just going to yield i, okay, I'm also going to um, console.log i beforehand, okay, yield i, and i is going to come out at the other end of this next function. So I can say, um, let result equals write that and it should be the value of i so i'm gonna um, add a string here to so say um, inside generator like so okay and then i can console.log um, outside generator result so let's save that and run it see what we get inside generator we get one outside generator we get an object. All right, so I wasn't exactly correct in saying that on the other side of this next function, we get i. We do, but it's inside of this object. If I just console.log this uh, result object, we can see what's actually going on here. Value one done is false. And the reason that we get an object and not just this i value is because this generator function is, uh, it's like an iterable. Um, you can iterate through it. And of course, in order to iterate through something, you have to know when it's done. Obviously, if you make a generator that contains an infinite, infinite loop, it's never going to be done. But, you know, it, we still have to say that we still have to say we're not done yet and then of course we get this value here value one so if i console.log result.value and then there we go inside generator one and outside of the generator it is also one and that makes perfect sense <laughs> all right so something um okay i'm gonna delete this first something that is really unique about these generators is since they are iterable we can iterate through them with the for of loop so i'm going to say let um, value of counter remember since it's iterable it tells us when we're done so this is not going to be an infinite loop i can just console.log value and we'll get one through ten there we go one through ten beautiful okay 
So, that's all well and good. Um, let's go back to calling next, because we can do some interesting things here. Um, so, I'm going to say uh, let result, okay, while result equals counter dot next, and then um, result, uh, actually, not result dot done. This will essentially keep looping until the iterator, or the generator is done, and um, then we'll have result dot value. What we can do in this next call is we can actually pass in a value. Say I wanted to skip a number and or skip every other number and just add an extra one or maybe I wanted to add an extra two but I wasn't really sure so I want to allow for me to pass this value in. If I pass this value in it comes out at the other end of this yield statement. Now of course we can't access this before the yield statement so we can't you know um, use it before, but I can say, um, let's see here, let, um, I'll call this the skip value right here equals yield i, and this in this case is going to be 1, or if I replace this with 2, it will be 2, so we'll leave it at 2, and then I want to say i plus equals the skip value, so that'll just skip, um, skip the num skip every few numbers, and so then we'll say console.log result.value, and we'll see what sort of sequence we get. We get 1, 4, 7, and 10, because it's actually adding 3, because remember, we have this I++ here as well. All right, um, one more thing that I want to cover is, remember that this, this is a generator function, you know, it returns an iterable generator, but it is still a function, so we can pass an argument. Um, we can pass in arguments here. Say I want to start counting up from a specific number. So I'll count up from, so i equals from, i is less than or equal to from plus 10. Okay, I'll remove this skip value. Um, well, eh. I will um, remove the skip value for now. We'll just pass in zero. Um, but now we can start counting up from, say, um, five. So now if we look at this, we go from 5 to 15 instead of from 1 all the way to 10. All right, that covers just about um, everything as far as the special features of generators. Remember, they're iterable, so you can do a lot of things with them. Um, but what is a practical application of generators? Well, other than infinite number sequences like Fibonacci or something like that, I was thinking about this and came up um, with this idea. Perhaps you are creating a social network or something like that. Maybe you work at Twitter or something, and uh, you want to create that infinite scrolling effect where you keep scrolling and it keeps loading more tweets infinitely. You know, you could use an array for this, but obviously then you have to keep appending things to the array, and sometimes dealing with lists like that can be, you know, a little bit frustrating. So we could use a generator instead. Um, so we can make our generator and say, um, um, I don't know, tweet generator and then um, just in an in infinite loop because remember it, this will pause inside of our infinite loop um, whenever we call yield or whenever we say yield so, while true we'd say maybe let tweet equals just like a call to our api api dot get tweet or something like that and then we could yield the tweet eh, if i can type and that could possibly be a practical application of a generator function because remember, these requests for values are made to order. So it's only going to request a tweet when you call next. And then it will yield you that tweet on demand. All right, everybody, there you go. That's a overview of the features of generators in uh, ES6 and possibly a practical application of how you could use them as well. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you learned something from it. My name is Jacob. Don't forget to subscribe and have a good one.